Hi, welcome to Kamiba Gallery. Um, we are here today with Orna Feinstein. She's an artist for our current exhibit, Layers of Time. And we're going to do a brief artist talk with her, uh, talk about the works and talk about the inspiration for this series. But before we start, what I want to do is just read a little quote from Orna about her work. And it says, I'm inspired and fascinated by the interior geometry of the organic, the concentric pattern of tree rings, the linear pattern of wood grain, and the cellular structure of a plant as seen under the microscope. The concept of my work lies in the process and the material. So I feel like that gives us a good starting off point to jump from. Um, this particular series uh, is called the Tree Spirit series, and it was first started in 2002, um, but has uh, gone until this year. Um, and what we did with this show is we pulled out a couple of works that have never been seen before from the old series when she first started and paired them with some of the new works. And uh, so I'd like us to sort of talk about um, the relationship of the old to the new um, and, and just sort of your inspirations for it. So the older pieces are the two pieces behind me, 2002 and 2003. So why do you want to right. sort of so, dive in? Uh, approximately 20 years ago, uh, actually, 25 years ago, I began uh, all the work uh, involving images from the tree trunk and the growth rings, and images as seen under the microscope, which is like small dots uh, clustered together. So, in 2000, I started to make prints, and I used a lot of nets and materials to create the, the prints in the process. And as I was working on the prints, I um, came up with the idea to actually collage nets and acrylic on canvases and create these paintings. And they were mostly black and white, and the color was very soft and, and muted. And it felt to me, because the monoprints were so colorful, I felt that the work here is so quiet and subdued, it's almost like a ghost of some kind of the tree, the image. That's why I said, well, I'm not going to title it ghost, so the spirit came. And I said, that's the spirit of the tree and not the actual tree, right? So uh, for two years, I worked on this series, and I made probably 35 pieces. And some of them were shown and some were sold. But because I was so in love with printmaking, I stopped completely with the paintings. And uh, it was quiet for probably 17 years. <laughs> I didn't touch the paintings at all. And then uh, probably in 2007, I believe, in uh, 17, 16. the circular piece mm -hmm. over there, I think was in about like five years ago, I went back to the series and I made few more in black and white and, and left them alone. Um, what happened was that last year uh, I had the chance to show the works <laughs> to some people and they were very excited about these paintings and many of them sold. And I'm always looking how to go back to old series and how to improve, change, uh, add. And I said, well, now that I'm so into the, the image and material, maybe it's time to go back to that series and that's when the, color, the colors were uh, the main attraction for me because the monoprints were so lively and colorful that I said, well, maybe what I should do for a change is go and do it in colors. So I said, okay, and then I started with the one and another one and I loved it. <laughs> the colors are really seductive and the, the process is extremely intense and, and long and uh, it's a lot of layers of nets of all kinds and, and acrylics and paintings and and collaging and painting again so uh, it might take three four weeks for one piece to be done so uh, started with smaller pieces and then uh, made larger ones and Right now, at my studio, I even have bigger pieces. <laughs> so it's like, like that, I always start small, and then the idea comes, and then the action comes, and then the pieces grow in size. 
And those uh, the prints that um, that inspired this or sort of preceded this, there was uh, the Ring series. Is that right? Correct. The, the Ring series. Yes. So, and so um, some of you may have seen that series uh, before, and they really do have a very similar look to it. Uh -huh. I think one of the biggest difference for me is that with these paintings, they're actually dimensional. So yeah. when you get up at an angle from at, at them, right. you get so much more depth than you would get in the prints just right. because of the dimensionality. Exactly, yeah. there's physical dimensionality to it and you can see it from the side because of the buildup of the material. Mm -hmm. It's not just like the paint on, on the canvas, but it's layers of material that is collaged one on top of the other that gives it that look. But as far as the correlation between the ring series monoprints and mm -hmm. these paintings, it's like one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the monoprints inspired these new works because if you will look, for example, at this one and this one from 20 years ago, if you look at the background of the art, it's like a more, I don't know what to, what to use, maybe more pristine or whatnot, but when you look at the new works, I like the unevenness of the background of the works, and that's inspired from the monoprints. When I made the monoprints, I have this unevenness of the background, which uh, was attractive to me. So I try to mimic it in the paintings. And yes, yeah. so all, all these effects are, are inspired by the monoprints, actually, mm -hmm. and the colors. And, and, and like I said, the, the, the depth of it, it's just, to me, it's one of my favorite parts about these paintings is being able to get up to the side and sort of dive into them. And they, they really, you know, it depends on how you look at it. Do they come out or do they go in? But it just feels very three-dimensional. Um, and I, I love that about the, the physical painting of them. Um, I also noticed that there's a, a variety of different netting that you're using, right? So it's not yes. just one net, it's a right. variety of different right. netting patterns and, and, uh, exactly. and materials. Right. Um, and that's again once one, one of the things that uh, is typical to my way of working is by collecting materials, because I'm a world traveler, uh -huh. I pick up materials everywhere I go, and then I put it to use in the art, so I might have a material from three different continents in one on one paintings, on one painting, yeah. And what is it? What is your? Um, I guess when you think about the, the direction that you're going with this series, mm -hmm. with, with these three being the latest in the series, right? Where do you where do you see it going? It's going larger, obviously. Yes. But what else is there? Is, is it the colors more? The colors are more intense, but is, is that always going to be the case, or do you, I mean, do you have any idea? So uh, just like any other series that I work on. I don't push myself to come up with the future. Right, right. <laughs> just you just them, follow it. I just let the, the process and the time uh, and the ideas come as I work. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's coming next. Definitely size, uh, they will be bigger even than this. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, because I'm surrounded by materials and new materials all the time, I might incorporate other things into it, but what it is, I don't know. Right, right. <laughs> That's what I like about the way I work, is it's always a mystery for me, and I don't know, I don't have a plan in the beginning when I start, but mm -hmm. you know, as I go, things happen, and I'm open to the changes in material and space, and everything that comes my way, I'm open to incorporate and accept it as my way of working, and and it, it does happen. <laughs> right, right. Yes. Well, good. So I want to just open it up for a few brief questions if anybody has any questions of, for Orna about mm -hmm. the work or process. Be shy. I do. Okay. I always have questions. So, Orna, I'm pretty sure when you do these on a horizontal table. Yes. And so when you're looking up at such a vertical, you know, they're hanging vertically, so you really get the depth. So when it's horizontal, how do you really appreciate? the shapes and everything, do you like at some point prop it up to look at it vertically or do you just keep it horizontal and it hangs? Okay, good question and uh, good observation actually because when I work with monoprints and I work on them for like 22 years now, you work on monoprints, they are also sitting on a table. So I'm used to look at the work down and not up 
and this way also I look at it from all angles okay so I go around and I see the work from all sides and and that's also one thing that leads to the fact that uh, most of my works you can hang them in any uh, direction you want because I'm working on them <laughs> from all sides it's important it, it happens that they have to look good from four directions so uh, I sometimes, uh, yeah, put it uh, up to, to see uh, how it looks, but sometimes I do it just because of space. <laughs> and you have to get it I, up. I have to put it up so I can put the other one on the table. <laughs> so, yeah. And sometimes I work on it when it's up, but usually it's on the table like, like mono It's the same, the same way it works for me. Great question. Yeah, very great question. There's also in your backgrounds, besides what you were comparing with the static, the, the static mm -hmm. there's a lot more movement. Yes, definitely. Um, and some of this one, it's particularly, it, it's as if it got dropped. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and move. It's really, it makes your eye follow along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, I think, uh, thanks to the material also. You know, the way I use the material, it creates the. Uh, 3D effects and movement. One of the things I really like about this one, and I was visiting with a with somebody else earlier today that was looking at it, and is that the the different netting mm -hmm. uh, or materials that you use. Mm -hmm. One is a, a lot more elongated, mm -hmm. and it's like when you cut through a tree in different directions, the the cells look different, and exactly. so it's like you've captured both directions of the tree. Exactly. You've got the the ring, like you've cut the, the cores, and then you've also got the, yeah. the longitudinal effect. And exactly. I love that about this piece. Exactly, that's also a good point, because when you cut a tree with a saw, right, so you have all these little things that are fraying and looking like little twigs, and they do appear when you look closely, you do see that. And the other thing, the next, that I told you that the work is inspired by imagery that's seen under the microscope, that you see that, 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 clusters together, right? So if you look closely, some of the nets have that look of the little dots that are one is close to the other. Well, I think um, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you, Orna, for, for the talk. And um, I look forward to sharing the show with everybody. And if, uh, if this video, if you're seeing this video during the show, um, it is up through April 9th. So please come and visit us.